Hey, Foot Clan, what could be more evil than Nazis? Producer J.J. Abrams dares to imagine an answer in Overlord, a thrilling, pulse-pounding action adventure with an unexpected twist. It's set in Nazi-occupied France mere hours before D-Day. Overlord follows a team of American paratroopers who come face-to-face -face with enemies unlike any the world has ever seen. You have to see it to believe it. Don't miss Paramount Pictures' Overlord. It's in theaters November 9th. It's rated R for strong, bloody violence, disturbing images, language, and brief sexual content. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from Draft.com Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome to the show. That sounded like someone who had Deshaun Watson in their lineup. That was jubilant. I throw a touchdown every four passes. Old school Watson came to play. School. It's always nice when a quarterback has the potential to be insane. Right. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Friday, October 26th, Thursday Night Football in the Books. Jason is here. Yes, I am. Very excited. I have made it alive to the studio after a night of Red Dead Redemption. Yes, yeah. I was going to say, we're all barely here, but, we're, but we are. Mike is here. I, was, I heard from many in my mentions. They said, look, we love the show. We love the podcast, but we get it. If there's no show tomorrow because everyone's been up playing Red Dead, we understand. I said, nay, Kill! we shall be here. Well, of course. I mean, I, I tweeted. Well, you beat the game. I, yeah, sure, sure. I played, <laughs> played a little bit. I tweeted last night. I, I was watching Thursday Night Football, and I said, look, Will Fuller, let's wrap this thing up. I got yeah. Red Dead to play. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, man, sorry, did Will. Did you call out Will Fuller by name? He did. And then immediately you after, monster. immediately after he wrapped up his season, Will oh. Fuller goes down with a knee injury. It has well, not we, been confirmed we yet. We think, but it's a torn ACL. Yeah. I mean, oh, and the Pro Football Doc and the uh, actual Texans. Yeah, have are said saying, that they're you know they assume that's what it is. They're waiting for the MRI to. Yeah. Uh, I I don't think I've I can remember a time where it's come out that the fear is a torn ACL so quickly from multiple parties, and then it's like, oh, it wasn't. Uh, pragmatically speaking, he was still a worthwhile start of the week. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, monster game, absolutely. There was far more fantasy goodness in this matchup than, than honestly, than I really th saw coming. Uh, Watson was absolutely on fire. Lamar Miller, he, uh, welcome back to the party, Lamar Miller. The past couple of weeks, he's been keeping it hot. 133-1. and one. Just narrowly missed a really, really long touchdown for his second. Hopkins was was nothing through about three quarters, and then he was everything. He was Hopkins once again. It was a crazy game. It was, and Drake delivered in a big he way. He did. Um, good game from Amendola because he threw a touchdown pass. Uh, Devontae Parker, welcome back to the NFL. Adam Gase is a buttle. That's a. I you think it will, will think, be one of the big storylines. Think about think about this. You had Kenyon Drake, this unbelievable talent, who couldn't get to the field even after you traded Jay Ajayi. He was behind Damian Williams. It took that injury, and now you've got Devontae Parker, first round pick, who hasn't been able to get to the field until Albert Wilson and Kenny Stills went down. He's been a did not participate coach's decision. You know, not even in the lineup, and now he's like, oh yeah, that that guy's pretty good. So are you in though? That because that's going to be the questions for everyone. Come waiver time. I know we're the waiver show is not till Tuesday, but people want to talk about it right now. Are are you going to be targeting Parker? If or are you I gonna... would rather be dead. <laughs> if still, I would rather be dead than target Devontae Parker. I don't want ifs or buts, candy or nuts. No I am coconuts. Out. 
If Stills is out, I would be willing to take a flyer on Park. Okay. If he catches a helmet deflected forty six yard pass in every game, he will be if you subtract, the wide receiver one. If you subtract yes. that play and say it didn't exist because it wasn't even a target to him, and I will fully grant that's not like one of those. Oh, if you take his eighty yard runaway, no, that was not even targeted to him. <laughs> it would have been awesome if he had caught every target. I know, but, but then he was eight. six receptions, five targets. Yes, that would have been sweet. Uh, but if you take that away, he still had a monster game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Brock and, Osweiler. Sure. Tannehill will be back. Tannehill's never targeted him. He's inconsistent. He always gets hurt. Maybe you're right. Yeah, but Good we'll luck. See. If you start him, I'll give you a silver dollar. <laughs> a pat on the back. A good <laughs> luck, boy. And the yes. other question will be, we finally have seen Deshaun Watson coming back to life for fantasy purposes, but if he doesn't have Will Fuller. It hurts. It's to me, is a really big hurt to the – the fantasy production well, for the, Watson. The Dolphins did not play defense last night. The secondary uh, took a – they were leaving early for Red Dead. Um, <laughs> and, and here's the thing. When you looked at Watson the previous two weeks, he was atrocious. He did not run the ball at all. He did not have the mobility to get outside the pocket, do what he did last night. Looks healthier and now. There weren't, yeah, there weren't really signs of life to him, and he came out and he exploded. And look, we were even looking at some rosters yesterday in our leagues and saying – you know, why didn't this guy drop Deshaun Watson? He's got Carson Wentz on his team. Why take up two spots? This breathed a little life into it. And that's the thing that a, a quarterback with legs can do. It's getting out, it's, it's what Russell Wilson can do. The deep ball becomes available when you can escape the pocket and let a, a elite talents do elite things. But now Hopkins is by himself. So his target share, his volume, his ability to uh, magnetize the ball to his hands. Yeah. Look, those are all there. Yeah, He's Hopkins. Safe. Hopkins gets a bump up from Fuller, but Watson gets a bump down. I yeah. agree. And also, Kiki may be on your waiver wire, uh, so just make sure you mentally note that because it's the Thursday game. Sometimes you forget about those guys by the time waivers are rolling. But Kiki's going to get a huge opportunity. Yes, and the targets will be yes. required. I mean, th there's just no way around it. All right, it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. You know, on Foot Clan Friday, we give away a gift card. And we give it away to... It's got a certain value. Um, yeah, well, we give it away to one person a week from jointhefoot.com. And today, it's Patrick Myers. Oh, Patrick. $55 to shopballers.com. Uh, I was really hoping as you started to say that name, it was Patrick Mahomes. Because we were really close. I, if Patrick Mahomes was a member of the Foot Clan, he'd win it every, be, week, every, every week he'd win it. Huh? In, a, in a way, because he's the quarterback on two of my teams, the five and two and six and one teams, I feel like he's a part of the family already. True. Yeah. Moving uh, along. Moving, moving along. Wait, you're, you're embittered by that fact? I am embittered by that fact, of course. I'm in those leagues with you. FootClanGiveaway.com, a signed Saquon Barkley jersey, and uh, you can head over there, enter. There are a number of free ways to enter, and uh, look, the, we, we've got so much to talk about today. We've got the rest of the fantasy forecast. We have some in or out injury news, and we have the Daily Dose on the show today. Uh, I also want to let you know the, the DFS podcast released this morning, uh, the Fantasy Hitman and Company. Delivering the DFS goods each and every week. It's free. It's once Absolutely. a week. Absolutely. Gets you ready to go. And the DFS pass is down to twenty nine ninety nine right now. Oh! Because the the season, uh, we're approaching the midway point. And so you get a discount on the DFS pass. If you wanted to give it a shot for the second half of the year, it's DFSPass.com. Uh, you guys ready for some in or out? Certainly. What's it going to be, McFly? <laughs> Are you in or out? Um. All right. Oh, Jason. Yeah. Oh, Jason, Jason, Jason. <laughs> Did you have a heart attack at GAC? Uh, yeah, I'm not happy because I was so excited yes. for Marlon Mack time to exist. He did not practice yesterday after we recorded the show where I said he's my start of the week. He was and, downgraded. And that was after being limited on Wednesday. Right. So you don't like to see that. You hope that it's just rest. I uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait because I think we should have a practice report before the end of this. It's really important. If he's back at practice today, great. If he's out today, then I, I have to pivot from my start. Uh, Matt Burita, in or out? He did not practice on Thursday. 
That doesn't mean he won't play. He's one of the hardest injury projection guys because he just keeps – Fucking the odds. Should we just put him as out for all fantasy owners? But yes. the matchup yeah. is so good. That's what I was going to bring up. Can you start him if he is active? Because he's going up against the Arizona Cardinals, who have been just yeah. And he's he is the later game, so you're going to have to make a decision early. You should be the most dirt owner. Yeah, if you could. I mean, I don't know if he's still on your waiver wire or not, but it would be great to have a backup option. If Burita is active. I'll Would you play still him. play I'll the play Colonel? Him if he's active. Would you play the Colonel? And for those who don't know, the Colonel, of course, <laughs> is Raheem Mustard. Mostart. Mostert. Yes. The Mostert. Cur- Colonel Mustard. Colonel Mustard. That's why you say Colonel Mustard. That it's is. a pronunciation um, benefit. Yeah. If if Brita is active, it's just a it's a glory play if you play the Colonel. I would be f- I think I would be fine starting the Colonel. I would not. Yeah. Because I, the way that I, I see it is, is I don't think Alfred Morris is going to, you know, really have that number two role. So if Breed is there, you're still playing a split backfield who's got work, and I don't think they're going to give Breed the, the whole kit and caboodle, so you'll be okay. Even if he's active, there's a chance, obviously, since it's happened twice already in seven weeks, that he exits again early, in which case... Uh, the colonel takes over, so I'm I'm a full. That's go why for I it. say it's a glory play. You're projecting Brita will play and then go down, and then Mustard yeah, that, will get the work. Lashawn McCoy in or out? He is practicing already on the limited basis. He's in the concussion protocol. He's the Monday night game though, so unless you're getting clearance early Sunday by early Sunday morning, you better have Chris Ivory or someone that you can pivot to if you want to rely on Shady. Do you think he'll play? I, I do. do. Royce Freeman in or out? Out. Chris Thompson? Uh, he's practicing in a limited basis, but he did last week as well, and he yeah. did not play. Um, I lean out. But I, I lean out as well, but if he's in, or is, is he right back in your lineup? Yes. Oh, 100%. Peyton Barber? In or out? I guess he's back. I mean, he returned to limited practice on Thursday, so I believe that he will play, which... We were talking about Ronald Jones as a low-level running back, too. If Peyton Barber plays, you can remove that yes. <laughs> Remove that statement. Uh, let's go with Sonny Michel. No, he won't play. Wide receivers, Allen Robinson. Didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday, in or out? I, I, That's I mean, troubling that he didn't practice on Thursday as well. He's completely not practicing. Uh, I'm going to lean out. Yeah. Uh, Geronimo Allison, Randall in. Cobb. I think th- they're both going to play. Robbie Anderson did not practice on Thursday as well, so trending out. But hopefully I think that doesn't play. matter. Uh, he's an in for me. Okay, real quick, uh, he was not spotted so far today at practice. He's wearing camouflage. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> he was <laughs> Monday night game. Monday night game. So that's a scary situation. You've got to have someone pick up Charles Clay in that same Monday night game. But I no, I I agree with Andy's face that he's making. But if you're playing the Gronk game, you better be ready. I mean. I've actually, we call Charles Clay Mister. We call Charles Clay Mister Necessary because of what he was for the offense. He's earned the moniker yet again. <laughs> he is necessary for Gronk owners. I I have been fielding a lot of questions of people who have Gronk and they've got someone else. They were able to pick up Greg Olson when he was coming out. You know, and I'm telling everyone to go with the other player. I'm not waiting. If you have another tight end that is, a, if you picked up OJ Howard or you picked up someone else. I'm just starting those other guys because there is still the chance. We've seen it before where Gronk is out there as a decoy. And he hasn't been a dominant force. So you've got the chance he misses. You've got the chance he's just not as integral and he's used in the decoy role. If you've got another You do good, have the chance he scores three times. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, I mean, so he is Jay, Gronk. Yes. It, but okay, I'm saying the Gronk. risk isn't worth the reward if, you comp- if you've if you got an O.J. Howard, if you've got a – uh, Greg Olson. I think it's easy to answer that way, though. If you have another top 10 option, then go with them. Right. But if you have no one else and your waiver wire right now is Ben Watson, Ricky Seals-Jones, Cameron Brait. So I would start Ben Watson, but not Ricky Seals-Jones or Cameron Brait. In those situations, I would grab Charles Clay okay. and wait for Gronk. That's my take. Sure. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm generally the more risk-averse yeah. of the three of us. Jack Doyle. He's I, back to limited practice. I do not believe he is going to practice. They have the bye week coming up, and I th- I think he'll be back after the bye. Yeah, I agree. 
All right. Uh, don't forget, we'll update you. These things are uh, always changing. <sighs> Got to be water. So the game day alerts one hour before the Sunday kickoff, and Mike will be on Sunday live on YouTube, Instagram, etc. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. You'll want to subscribe. We have something special planned for Halloween. I'm telling you, you oh. don't want to miss it. You have to have it. But did you guys hear the biggest news injury wise of the week? Huge. Maybe. Ed Dixon oh. upgraded to full. <laughs> Oh, in Thursday's practice. Oh, yeah, baby. Get ready. What team it's is he on, Jason? The Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, because people, signed a monster contract. People don't know. Oh, monster contract? Yes, he signed a monster contract for like, Ed Dixon. Like he signed on with the company Monster he, Energy Drinks? Three, no, he, <laughs> three years. Uh, isn't it like $30 million? No. It isn't even remotely wow, close Jason. to that. Wow, Jason. $15 million? No, not even 15 Yes, it, it, It's three years, 10.7. <laughs> Really? Yes, and guaranteed yeah, is three million. That's what he is Why worth. Why do you think Ed Dixon just wait, just is collecting wait. thirty million dollars? Ed, Ed Dixon caught ninety-five percent of his total career yards in that one game against Detroit. Just, just you wait. Oh, we will wait yes. forever for thirty-one-year-old Ed Dixon to break out. It's, yeah, it's, get out of there. It's just about to happen. He's an upgrade for the running game. Yeah. All right, hey, before we get into the rest of the fantasy forecast... We do have breaking news that uh, it's, we don't need the button. It appears Marlon Mack uh, is uh, practicing today. <laughs> so that was that came through the sleeper alert. I have not verified the, the hype, source. It, the, hype is, um, the hype is too intense on Marlon Mack. Yeah. I, uh, major pump. Major yeah, pump. I, I will say this. With, with him missing, it, it still feels like I should not make it my start of the week. He's risky. I'm going to pivot to Gurley. Question. <laughs> You're going girly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> I, I have good feeling about him. With regards to the Will Fuller injury, we did have a I had a number of Twitter questions that were in the same vein asking this question for uh for commissioners, for owners in this situation. A lot of people entered into trades. Okay, so here's here's one example. On Wednesday I traded Doug Martin for Will Fuller. Unfortunately, we got a twenty four hour veto process. Because the Thursday night game was kicking off, and he was part of the deal. That means the trade doesn't go through until week nine next Tuesday. So now I'm getting a broken Will Fuller, and my friend is getting Doug Martin. Should Think the commission the better end of that deal? Should the commissioner <laughs> automatically <laughs> cancel the trade now that I'm receiving damaged goods? The commissioner and the rest of the league think the trade should go through. I'm not sure uh, if that's because I'm in first place or what. Let me know your thoughts. Here's why we. Funny of the timing, we just talked about this on the show that when you're heading into the weekend, you need to cancel all your trades because you don't want something to happen in the middle of a game where a player can then jump on and click accept of a trade because a player is now injured. The same is for Thursday nights. Don't make trades. if You, you knew the 24-hour process was there. You can't make a trade heading into the game where something might happen and... I, I love the Foot Clan. I love all all the listeners of the show. But you made a mistake, man. Yeah. You the the issue is you took you took you a shot. Risk. You shooters got to shoot whenever you took your shot. Whenever you are accepting a trade, and you know this isn't going to go through until the next week. That's the risk in every single yeah. one of these trades. Now, if the uh, this is the only way that I would say you can undo the trade. The only way is if the other player, the other team the other owner, involved in the yeah. trade, says. Yeah, I, I don't feel right about it. I'm fine undoing it. If they want to undo it for guilt or whatever reason, then uh, sure. I, or just I, being a moral upstanding sure, citizen. Yes. I uh, don't think it's immoral to to right. sleep in the bed that they made, but I get what you're saying, like the, the spirit of the trade. I had somebody else write with the reverse situation, and they said, I just traded you know these three players to get Todd Gurley, and it was like two players plus Will Fuller. He's like, I kind of feel bad about it now because I don't think the trade was that good to begin with for this person. But you got Todd Gurley. I would stick with the yeah. uh, <laughs> don't Don't get guilty. <laughs> don't get guilty. Just One of the criminal's girly. best rules. <laughs> don't, don't get guilty. Get girly. Get girly. <laughs> All right. Rest of the fantasy forecast coming up. But before we uh, jump in, I want to thank Simply Safe Home Security for sponsoring this podcast. Simply Safe is ready for anything that gets thrown at it. I'm sure you've heard about Simply Safe, and there's a reason why. It's because it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. It should, but it doesn't. You don't get into long-term contracts. 
You've got to check it out. We recommend it to everybody. It's what we use here at the office. Look, if a storm takes out your power, Simply Safe is ready. If an intruder cuts the phone line, Simply Safe is ready. Say they destroy the keypad, the siren. They're going to get you the help you need, no matter what. And um, look, maybe you don't feel like you need overkill, but be ready for that worst case scenario because Simply Safe is always ready. And that's what makes it great. We love them. And right now, you can go today to simplysafe.com slash footballers for a special offer that's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Remember, Simply Safe is ready for anything that gets thrown its way. Folkland, we know that you've heard of P90X T25. That's why it's so great to thank today's sponsor, Beach Body On Demand. It's a streaming service that gives you instant access to a wide variety of effective workouts anytime, anywhere. Hundreds of workouts for all fitness levels, ranging from bodybuilding to yoga and dance. You're sure to find something you love. Workouts are as short as 10 minutes. Don't require extra equipment. You can do them from the comfort of your living room. I love P90X. Tony Horton, that's my man. Get it tight. Get it right. (laughs) Do your best. Forget the rest. Sean T., uh, with the T25 specifically, it's a great workout. Get it done really quick. I really, We really want you to try this service. And right now, our listeners can get a special free trial membership, including the new 14-day results plan where you can lose up to nine pounds in the first two weeks. Here's what you got to do. Text FOOTBALLERS to 303030. You'll get full access to this entire platform for free. All the workouts, the nutrition information, the results plan to get you super fast results and support totally free. Again, just text footballers to 30, 30, 30. Get fit, people. Fantasy forecast. All right. London. London again. We've got the Eagles at the Jags early, early, early. 930 Eastern. Set your lineups early. Remember to remove those players from your flex spot. Put them in their your starting spot. Yep. And, uh, you know, if there's anybody that you're on the fence about, just remember, if you wake up after the game starts, you don't get to change them. Um, let's start here with that London game. The Eagles, the Jags. Uh, some news about that game. A.J. Bouye. Yeah. Mm. Out. Yeah, we did the full forecast of this game yesterday but that that's the news you got to update AJ Bouye is an incredible cornerback this is it's got to be at least a, a slight upgrade for Carson Wentz in the passing attack yeah I mean you you have uh Jalen Ramsey and AJ Bouye that's right in on the second half that's what's made the Jaguars so great it's allowed you know coverage sacks and things like that so this is good news I think this is good news for Nelson Aguilar at least having an an opportunity, I would expect Ramsey to be on Alshon. Aguilar has been targeted intensely this year. Yes, he has not. He has not done enough <laughs> with those targets. I would say, is that fair? That's fair. Yeah. Uh, so this is a game where maybe he breaks out, but it, really, it everything is Ertz to me. Like everything always is coming up Ertz for the Eagles. Everything Ertz. Everything mm. Ertz all all over, and that is it's that a good is REM song. After you're done working out, everything hurts. <laughs> I also Everybody So if, if you were if you were worried about playing Alshon Jeffrey because of the tag team cornerback duo, I will, first off, I don't think you should have been, but now you have a reason to say Alshon's going to be fine. The 2-4 and 1 Browns take on the 3-2 and 1 Steelers. It's a uh well, it's a 49 point over under the Steelers are 8 point favorites. These two teams need to go to the overtime. (laughs) It'll be great. Again, double ties. I want them to tie twice. Uh, Nick Chubb, now the running back for Cleveland. Um, Can they count? Can fantasy owners count on Nick Chubb for RB2 production in this matchup? Lower level RB2 production. He's going to get a ton of volume, and he's the goal line back. And and if Cleveland ever gets – if they ever sniff the goal line, they go to the run. So you, you always have touchdown upside with Nick Chubb. We saw that with Carlos Hyde. Yeah. Carlos Hyde was very inefficient this season, but very good for fantasy because he was getting all the goal line work when they got around there. And so, yeah, Chubb is basically Carlos Hyde plus because he has the ability to break off a 50-yard run for a touchdown uh, should one open up. And, you know, the the 
so far the Steelers have been very solid against the run and and not a, not solid at all against the pass, which is not Chubb's game. So do you think Duke Johnson could be more involved in a higher scoring a game in the passing game, or are you guys low on him simply because the first Chubb high or the first Chubb Duke Johnson game did not see a lot of usage for Duke Johnson? Uh, look, there's always the possibility. Duke Johnson was pretty good the week before, but because the range of outcomes for Duke Johnson is so wide, I, I'm looking elsewhere in this matchup. I'm ideally not starting Duke Johnson in Pittsburgh. You know, right. uh, I, it's, you can. If uh, There's bye weeks, but I, I'm, I'm scared. His usage as far as opportunities was actually very similar to two weeks ago when he had the big game, four receptions, 73 yards, was on five targets. He had four targets last week, but it only turned into four receptions for 23 yards. Do you think yards. he's flex-worthy? He, he's not my favorite flex option, but desperate times, man. Can uh, Do we expect David Njoku to keep up the, uh, the yes. newfound mojo with Baker Mayfield? Yes, I do. He has been the tight end five since Baker Mayfield took over. So uh, Steelers, not good. Not good against the tight end position. That's uh, why David Njoku is my start of the week. Yeah, yeah he's, the breakout is real. All right, is this the last time we see James Conner with that uh, uh, delicious workload? No. I don't. At some point, you have to go, eh, we're going to give it another week. I mean, you know. I think it's the last time. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe it aren't, is. Aren't you just fatigued? I mean, the reality is he has to come back. We're talking about Le'Veon Bell. Yes. Yeah, so we sound like we're talking about Voldemort right now. <laughs> he who shall not be named. No, look, James Conner's been great. I mean, people have been posting the metrics everywhere, talking about how James Conner's actually been more efficient than Le'Veon Bell was through these same amount of games last year, better against stacked boxes. Uh, the Steelers are scoring three more points yeah. per game with James Conner. Right, exactly. And, and, and obviously – the team has rallied around Connor and is not very happy with Le'Veon Bell. And I mean that on a player level. So, you know, I, I don't, I'm less convinced that when Le'Veon Bell comes back, at least week one, he's just going to take over. I, I don't think that's going to happen, but we do know right now, this is James Connor's game. It's his workload. And, uh, you know, maybe how he performs in this game could possibly dictate what happens going forward. Well, and I think the question was, is this the last full workload for him? Yeah, it's the last and, full. And would you be trading him like you had advised for previous weeks if you can? Lev Bell needs to report by what? Week 10, right? The trade deadline is... Uh, this Tuesday. But yeah, that's, the, that's the current narrative, right? First, it was, it was going to be, he's coming back at the bye week. Mm -hmm. But then the bye week happened. It was, well, it's the trade deadline. He's worried about the trade deadline. The only thing that we know for sure is that he has to report by week 10 to have free agent eligibility. It's fair. So at this point, I don't think it's a trade deadline issue. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But even if it is a trade deadline issue, that's next Tuesday. They're going to report on Monday, and he's not going to be there. Yeah, Tuesday, and he's not going to be there. It's so very So I think possible. James Conner gets a full workload next week. Juju Smith-Schuster, right now eighth in the league in targets per game. He has dominated Cleveland in two career games, nine for 143 and a touchdown. And then in week one, five for 119. Feeling very cozy with Juju. Yep. Yeah, all, all passing Vance members. McDonald. All passing members for the Pittsburgh Steelers shall be started. The two and five Colts take on the one and five Raiders in Oakland. The Raiders are three-point underdogs at home, a 50-and-a-half point over under. And the uh, feature back Doug Martin makes his debut. It's a Doug Martin, Jordy Nelson, Martavis, Brian, Jared Cook show, Mike. <laughs> wow. How much would you pay for that ticket? Uh, what year is it? <laughs> That's a good question. Is it four years ago? Uh, this would be a hot team. Team is lit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, they're at home. Yes, they're coming off the bye. But you, you grimace when you talk about starting anybody from Oakland, right? Do you really feel confident in Jordy Nelson because Amari Cooper's gone? I do. Uh, There's going to be opportunity. I yes. just think that, you know, look, the Colts are going to score because the Raiders can't stop anybody. And the Colts offense has been looking better and better. I'm a big fan of Frank Reich, the, the new uh, head coach. And Andrew Luck has, I think, put to bed all the shoulder questions and, and worries uh, over these first seven weeks of the season. So if they're scoring and the Raiders have to throw the ball, uh, there's no Colts 
this is not a Colts defense that's going to scare me where I think if Jordy Nelson gets 10 plus targets, he's going to be fantasy relevant. That doesn't necessarily mean he's, you know, a, a top 15 wide receiver, but he's a guy that I think should be started in most situations. Okay. All right. Some uh, Got some Martavis Bryant hype coming out this morning. Greg Olson, really excited about Martavis, the hype train. Yeah, I mean, Mar Martavis is an interesting speculative type of ad. If right. you had a burner spot and you wanted to throw him on there, because we've seen him, we've we've seen him be a, a a quality fantasy producer before. He's got the speed to do it. I don't know that Derek Carr is willing and wanting to throw the ball down that's, the field. That's the bigger problem for Martavis. If you're going to get production, it's because a wide receiver screen turned into a seventy yard play. Yes, and. Martavis can do that. He has the ability, but that's a that's a low probability thing to be counting on. He needs a go route. Mar yeah, but Carr's not going to throw the Martavis go route. Martavis had seventy two percent uh, snap count in before the bye week with Amari Cooper, uh, thirty four routes run. That'll go up. So uh, interesting that he was get, seeing that much time beforehand. Uh, we've talked enough about Doug Martin. I mean, he's averaging three yards a carry since twenty sixteen. It's is not, that why Mike loves him so much? Yeah, Mike Mike loves him because it's a low – it's kind of a – you can handle that low of a yards per carry. Right? Yeah. Mike feels like he could go jogging with him and keep up. Oh, well, I probably could do that. Until your shin started hurting. Yeah. Uh, well, he's, well, he's holding a Krampus right now. Look, you have a Krampus doll. Look, I, we, we talked about desperate times when I was talking about Duke Johnson. I would rather flex Doug Martin than Duke Johnson. Can we at least agree on that? I would that? rather flex Jalen Richard over both of them. With I that, you didn't give me that option. Well, no. you have it now. Is he an RB2 in PPR leagues? Jalen Richard. Yes. Colts giving up the third most receptions to the running back position. Uh, seems like he'd be a nice DFS target too. And Richard has already got 31 receptions on the year. Sixth among running backs. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then Jason let, loves Jared Cook. Let's say I do. He's my start of the week. I, you know, look, I, I, here's a good example, and people might say it's crazy. I think Jared Cook has a better game than Eric Ebron in this same matchup. Eric Ebron has been on fire, uh, you know, was catching all the touchdowns, but uh, T.Y. Hilton is back. The Raiders have been okay against tight end because they've been so bad elsewhere, and this might not be an Eric Ebron game. If Marlon Mack is out, are you going Naeem Hines or are you going Jordan Wilkins? Eileen Hines. Hard pass on all. Really? Yes. Against the Raiders, if, if Marlon Mack is out, you're not going to start any of those running backs? I guess I would flex Naeem Hines, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jack Doyle, if he comes back, do you start Ebron? You brought him up. Like, w it, does Jack Doyle You're somehow make Ebron yeah. not startable? No. Agreed. Uh, I would still say Ebron is startable. Okay. The one in six 49ers take on the one in six Cardinals. Uh, Speaking of hard pass, fans <laughs> will can we be cancel this game. They're distributing. Um, you know, they do the giveaways. They're uh, twenty thousand. The first twenty thousand fans get those devices that hold your eyes open. Oh, <laughs> like, very. They nice. automatically. Yeah, clockwork Hold. orange. And then the other yeah. 20,000 are given blindfolds. <laughs> that is so funny and that Mike plugs. thinks there's going to be more than 20,000 people. Yeah, <laughs> the, there will be over 16,000 extra apparatuses <laughs> available after the game. But those 4,000 hey, are new be offensive coordinator, right? Yes. This is the Byron big storyline. Mike McCoy is gone. Byron Leftwich is in charge. He was the right-hand man of Bruce Arians. Has a lot of great quotes circulating from his press conference yesterday about how he was shoulders to shoulder. A lot of knights nodding off with Bruce Arians. He's going to incorporate everything from that so system. Cute. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, are we buying that hype? Because, look, you can't do worse it was so frustrating to watch David Johnson constantly get rushed right up the middle for no gain. So frustrating. You do anything else, and you're going to get more value. So there, I think there's more value here. These but, quotes weren't there when we brought it up on Monday. I mean, correct. Uh, once Mike McCoy was fired, my my approach was, look, Byron Leffert was part of Bruce Arians' uh, coaching staff. Anything that's not Mike McCoy, that's a plus. Anything that is Bruce Arians, that's a plus. David Johnson doing anything but running it up the middle. That's a plus. So, yeah, I was targeting him everywhere. David Johnson is a top, you know, 12 running back rest of the season. Hmm. Yeah, well, so, he's been a top 12 running back so far. At least for this week so far, he will be. 
this season. Yeah, it's a good matchup. I, I still do have my concerns with Josh Rosen, the interior of the offensive line, and the overall offense. They, they don't have a lot of great weapons. Christian Kirk is an ascending talent. Larry Fitzgerald is a descending talent. And then there's nobody else. Larry Fitzgerald, though, there's some talk about him being more involved. Do you have any interest in picking him up off the waiver wire to see what happens or no? Yes, 100% I have interest in picking him up off the waiver wire. This is not a homer thing. I remember in the offseason, you guys criticizing me on uh, why did. I hate Larry Fitzgerald so much. Um, he's been injured. If you remember the first week of the season, right before the injury, 7 for 76. He was still involved, the most targeted, the number, the clear number one target, and then he's been injured and hobbled, not doing well. Last week, 4 for 40, got the touchdown. He's at home. We talked about the the difference in splits between home and road for Larry. I don't expect Christian Kirk to be the leading receiver in this week's game. I expect it to be Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, would you pick up Fitzgerald over Kirk if you were trying to grab a season-long option? I would. Okay. And then on the other side of the ball, we've talked already about the burrito situation, Colonel Mustard. Uh, in the conservatory, but Marquise Goodwin, is he a good boom play this week? Right now averaging fifth in the league in average depth of target, sixth among running backs, or I'm sorry, amongst wide receivers and fantasy points per target, but, uh, you know, big boom bust play. Yes, big boom. We've we've now seen big boom, big bust in the past two weeks from Marquise Goodwin, so if, if you're going to play him, you're accepting that you may receive two points. Well, Pierre Garçon is... He's gonna. He's not gonna play. He's, he's gonna miss the game. So that means I think Goodwin is, uh, you know, more a, targets. More targets. George Kittle. Yes, I agree. George Kittle is hop really upon the, his back <laughs> and ride. And I like that George Kittle understands fantasy. Yeah, football. what was that story? There, there was a quote about him saying how he was gave some extra oomph to get into the end zone because his fantasy coaches need points. Oh, okay. Thank All you, right. George. We, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I I remember that uh, replay review. I didn't think he got in, <laughs> and they gave it to him. All right, the three, two, and one Packers travel to Los Angeles to take on the undefeated Rams. Yeah, the Rams are nine and a half point favorites. Wow, a fifty-six and a half point over under. You know the Packers coming off the bye week, mm. and uh, this is the Win. largest line. The biggest uh, spread in terms of underdog that Aaron Rodgers has ever had. I it, was I, I was unaware of that. I did not uh, see that stat. I was literally going to pose that question. I can't ever remember Aaron Rodgers being in this situation, but that's... They're disrespecting the rocket launch record of the Packers. What is that? Three, two, one. Oh, oh. is this blast off? Blast off! Right now? Oh, well, that's what the record says. Anyway, <laughs> I got Jason Dude, good I with that, that one. That is, look, <laughs> I am a fan of the record blast off. I, Thank you. I'm going to be honest. I thought of that joke during the the uh, the Browns Steelers, game, the Steelers matchup, but Saved I did up. I didn't have time to use it. Somehow the opportunity presented itself again. And I could not pass it up. Well, really, there's nothing more to cover at this yeah, point. At this All point, right, the next game. game. <laughs> no, I mean, in some ways, that's true because you're starting Aaron Rodgers. You're starting. Uh, Goff, Gurley, Cooks, Woods. Devontae Adams. Yeah, and Devontae Adams. So I think the questions that I, I have, one one is about Jimmy Graham because I kind of, like I've been offered Jimmy Graham in leagues. I've, I've had Jimmy Graham starting against me. I always feel like I'm happy that he's starting against me, but he's kind of playing well. And, you know, he's averaging seven and a half targets per game. He's been a tight end one in four straight games. And players like Jared Cook have uh, you know exploited the Rams defense sure. funneling things in the middle of the field is he a top five tight end this week yeah I, I think he is there's gonna be so so many passing yards in this game and uh, the over under is 56 and a half which is very high I'm slamming the over on this I I, I can't, wow I can't fathom them not, these two teams not being able to both score uh, when needed. So, yeah, I think Jimmy Graham is valuable. Three of his seven games, he's been over 75 yards for a tight end. That's crazy. And coming into the season, we thought it was going to be all of his touchdown opportunities that made him special. So I, I, I like Jimmy Graham quite a bit in this game. The only breaks that I'm going to uh, tap here for Jimmy Graham, they didn't have anyone 
I mean, they, you had you had Devontae Adams and then rookie wide receivers who they held their own. But they weren't. But, rel- but they're still rookies and not re- necessarily as reliable in those third down situations. Correct. So I think that Jimmy Graham did receive an uptick of opportunity because of of the injuries, and now Geronimo is back. Randall Cobb is back at least for now. So it, I'm I'm not opposed at all to calling Jimmy Graham a. He's a tight end one. If you have to start a running back on on the Packers this week, you are starting Aaron Jones, Mike or Jason. Yeah, it would it would be Aaron Jones. I think there's a a chance for uh, a larger game this week from Aaron Jones, but I would rather not. I want to say I'd rather not start him, but I think he's actually going to be okay. If you this have game. to pick one, you're picking Aaron Jones. Yes, one hundred percent. Todd Gurley has 14 touchdowns. He is on pace to break the single season record. Bananas. And I wanted to briefly bring this up because I brought up the other day, you know, what if the Rams clinch early? Do they play Gurley in week 16? I hope he remains on pace to break the record because last year the Rams did struggle, as Mike said, after resting their players in week 17, despite the fact that, you know, yeah, they could have gotten the three seed, although it was not just the, up to them. It was dependent on other teams. Right. If Gurley's on pace for a record, it, it flips the script entirely because then they're playing for the record. I mean, Todd Gurley's on the field, and Sean McVay's agenda is to get a player a touchdown record. That is the best-case scenario for a fantasy running back. So I didn't want to send panic and chills through people's souls when I said, hey, maybe Gurley gets sat. We all said on the show, we're not moving and we're not really doing anything about it. But there is the world where Todd Gurley wins you a title because he is going for a, a record. He has the most – or he's tied with Priest Holmes for the most through the first seven weeks of the season. And so he's, he is well aware of where he's at on that record, and it is important to him. That's yeah. been reported. So, I mean, that, it'll be – so coming down to week 16, it'll be the first time a running back will be the running back one on the week with four carries. Oh, really? Yeah, so there you go. It'll be all Malcolm Brown. Oh, until they... And then they'll get down to the one. Okay, all right, get in there, Gurley. So we'll have four carries and four touchdowns. It has been confirmed that Will Fuller is out for the season with a oh. torn right ACL. Um, that sucks. He looked defeated on the field after that play. He didn't he even did. look in pain. He just looked, like, resigned. And that, that stinks because two times in that game, Mike, out of... Out of the blue, just posted in our Slack channel. Well, it wasn't. Like, it was like after Will, a play. Will Fuller is really fast. There are very few players in the NFL that can do what Will Fuller can do. Tyreek it's, Hill. It stinks. He's been injury it, prone his whole career. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's really, really sad because this is an offense. We saw it the second half of last year before Watson got injured. And now that they're, they're rolling – this is an offense that could be a monster yes. for fantasy and for just the NFL. I mean, three weeks into the season when the Texans were 0-3, Vegas, odds-on favorite to be the first coach fired was Bill O'Brien, and now they're 5-3. Now they're going to win the division, or look like it. Well, yeah, this is a huge blow. If the Jags don't figure things out, that is what's going to happen. The 5-1 and one Saints take on the 4-2-1 and one Vikings in an exciting Sunday night football game. I love it when you have a uh, the primetime games just filled with fantasy players. 52.5 point over under. The Vikings are one-point home favorites. And, uh, look, I, this is exciting. This is our rematch from the Minnesota Miracle, the Stephon Diggs um, walk-off. And I love Diggs in this game. He's my start of the week. Looking at the storylines for this matchup, it starts with Latavius Murray and Dalvin Cook in the situation. We know that Cook is going to be out a while couple great games. I mean, Latavius Murray went from dud fill-in to stud fill-in. Week six oh. was the RB7. Week seven was the RB6. But, you know, what do you think about him in this game at home? I am not a big fan of Latavius Murray in this game. Now, can you start him? Absolutely. I wasn't a big fan of him last week, and he still came through. Sure. Yeah, the Jets, RB6. Yes, but the, the Jets, the, the the Saints rush defense has been very good. They're the third best against fantasy points given up against the running back position. And I think this will be a higher scoring game where it's not going to be perfect for the running game script. And then you've got a tough D. Now, he'll, he'll get the volume, so he's okay. To me, though, he is not a top 20 running back. He's right. in that low end RB2 or a flexible RB3. That's how I I see him despite how great he's been the last two games. Uh okay, let's let's 
talk about Alvin Kamara. Let's talk about Mark Ingram. They're both must starts in this game, despite the uh, the tough matchup. Yeah, oh, Kamara is always a must start. Ingram is the one where you can take a look and decide if you want to play him or not. I will just lay out my personal scenario. I have to. I need two running backs between the three guys of Nick Chubb, Carry on Johnson, and Mark Ingram. Yeah, who are you playing? As of right now, Mark Ingram is on my bench. Okay. So if, if you don't have to play him, and he's not a must bench either. He's just he's similar to. I, I sure. see similar to Latavius Murray, fringe running back too. Murray or Ingram? Great Ooh, question. That is a great, great question. question. I would take Ingram yeah, over I would Murray. Too. I would as well. All right. Uh, Traquan Smith was an you know, he was a big discussion point for the waiver show. Is he a legit flex play in this game or are we kind of yes. you know, on the road against Minnesota? No, yeah, he, I, legit I, flex. He'll be a legit flex play every single week. Now. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I don't know that every single week, but this is going to be a high-scoring game. So I, I would love Traquan Smith as one of those shoot-for-the-moon 70-yard touchdown flex options. What about Kyle Rudolph? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he, he plays tight end. He does. <laughs> he does. For the Minnesota um, Vikings, the Saints are great teammate. Great teammate. Yeah, a great friend of the show. Solid guy. Been he's, on the been show. On, he's been on the podcast. But this is – if you got him, you're probably playing him. But, like, okay, I'll just – we'll go same game. Would you rather Would you rather play Kyle Rudolph or play Ben Watson? I was looking at this same thing because Ben Watson has been so involved. The Vikings are actually not that good against tight end, whereas the Saints are. And I was thinking – I was thinking the exact same question. Who would I rather start? And I, I see no difference between them. I see them as identical players. The one that scores, you're happy with. If they don't score, you're not happy with them at all. Ben Watson this whole year, that's been the story. So yeah. I don't think I see them any different. Yeah, so, uh, I, you I know. I think I would start Rudolph. Yeah. I, I don't feel good about it. I would probably do that too because they're the favorite. And that would be my defining factor being at home. All right. Uh, let's talk about the Monday Night Football game. The five and two Patriots take on the two and five Bills. The Bills are at home. The Bills are fourteen point underdogs. <laughs> Holy crap! The Bills have filed a petition to uh, simply simulate this game in the com in a computer. Mm -hmm. Just play it on Madden and file away this. We accept all results. We just want to keep everybody else healthy. No, I mean, look. When you break it down, the Bills don't have their starting quarterback. The Bills might not have their starting running back. The Bills have no tangible, actual starting wide receivers on their roster. And, um, you know, Charles Clay leads the way with about three catches a week. So th is there any scenario where we're surprised with a lack of Patriot production in this game? On the road, divisional matchup, the Bills have had a couple of randomly surprising defensive performances this year. I mean, that's what it would have to be. It would have to be one of these shocking Bills performances. We've seen it twice already. But you, you, in fantasy football, you play the probabilities. Several weeks ago, we, you know, we were light up your Vikings against the Bills. That was wrong. But the process was still right. I mean, you have to play the odds on favorite for what the result's going to be. And the Patriots should destroy the heck out of the Bills. So I'm fine with pretty much all of the Patriots. <laughs> Did you say destroy the heck out of the Bills? Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I, the Patriots' defense – and, you know, their defense special teams, that's going to be uh, – I mean, they might be the highest scorer outside of Tom Brady. They're right. Over under six touchdowns from the <laughs> – Well, I, I think I, I think you might be surprised with with their defense. I think they'll be obviously – they're a top five start. But, um, I you know, it's not Peterman. <laughs> Is that so, a good thing I don't know or if, a bad yeah, thing Anderson at this point? was really bad. Uh how does the Gronk injury change target distribution? If you were to miss the game, how excited are you for Gordon and for Edelman? Do they move I'm up very a tier? I'm very excited for Edelman. That's why it's my start of the week. And, yeah, I mean, these guys are starting for you regardless. Can you flex Chris Hogan if, if Gronk is out? Yes. James White, also great play. Josh Gordon I would be willing to play. Brady, obviously. Uh, Sony Michelle probably won't play. On the Bills' side of the ball, the only player that I would play is Shady or Chris Ivory. Man, I Bills are the only defense, by the way, that has not allowed over 300 passing yards in a game. If Gronk, I'm going to say this, if Gronk is out, the Bills are covering this spread. This game's this game will be seven points or less if the if mm. Gronk is out. That's my that is my uh, hot take 
I'm not going to go almost upset here. I was going to try to beat you. I'm not an absolute lunatic, but I... uh, Did you... Do you have an almost upset this week? I did. I did. It was the the Lions game. Ah, okay. All right, before the Daily Dose, I do want to jump into a couple injury updates. The Buccaneers, head coach Dirk Cutter on the show... Well, not on the show, but during the show. <laughs> Look, Jerk, you're welcome to come on. Yeah, anytime you want. Uh, he said Peyton Barber's good to go. I know there was some some bullish uh, yes. talk about Ronald Jones yesterday. No Would longer. you like to dispose of that? Yeah, yep. that's Crumple it up, throw in the garbage. I mean, the reality is we thought that coming out of the bye, it was going to be the Ronald Jones show. It wasn't. It was the Peyton Barber show. That's their starting running back. You're just going to have to deal with it, Ronald Jones fans. Deal with it. It's going to be painful. I mean, enjoy your disappointment regardless. The Daily Dose, brought to you by Draft. All right, last week I whooped your guys' butts. Yeah, you did. You yeah. did. Yeah. My second loss. Still of Still reeling. Season. So what are we doing today, Mike? We're doing a quarterback draft. All right, I've heard of that. So if you're not familiar, you can check out draft.com slash ballers. Get in on the action. Go play some draft. It's DFS, but you already know how to play. Yeah. So and, I don't get the first pick though. That's, oh, that's I unfortunate. Win. No. As, I, of, as of right now, which will hold, Jason has the first pick. So gee, this, this I format, wonder who I'm going to take. <laughs> yeah, it's really not fair. It's really not fair in a quarterback only that you get the first pick. I guess someone's gonna someone someone has first, yeah. to get the first pick. And look, so who are you going with? I'm going to stay in. The, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Mitch, Mitchell Trubisky, because yeah. you want to stand by him. No, the, for sure, my guy has to be. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, he's everyone's number one quarterback until he's not. Yeah, and I followed that up. Uh, I'm taking Aaron Rodgers in the in the insane over under and scoring that we're projecting for the Rams Packer game. I went Big Ben, Kirk Cousins. Interesting, Ooh. Big Ben, Kirk Cousins. I like Cousins at home against New Orleans uh, because New Orleans can score and Kirk Cousins can score uh, at home. No! I'm very happy. I I thought for sure you would take Jared Garf. Uh, but now I've got that entire entire match. Yeah, I'm very yeah. happy about it. I, I I love that. I was really hoping to get Jared Goff. Unfortunately, I did not. But Drew Brees is not too bad of a consolation prize. And, you know, the Oakland Raiders defense, they don't scare me much. Andrew Luck has been just excellent. I like what their offense is doing. So I'm going to go He's a touchdown that machine right now. And I'm Jameis Winston. It's going to be my third quarterback pick against Cincinnati. Well, I'll go with Truth Bisky. Oh. And I'll combine him with my start of the week, Andy Dalton, at home against Tampa Bay. Feel good about that. You guys are going to lose to me again. All right. Well, then I'll take, Come the, on. I'll take the player that I bypassed the first time, and that's Tom Brady. No yeah. chance at 300 yards, man. You hear that stat? I, uh, I was – that's that's very upsetting because that's twice in a row. I wanted Goff and Brady – Ended up with I Drew Brees them to Mike. and Carson Wentz. Now, what are the rules? Can I take Deshaun Watson? No. No? No, no, because he already played. Yeah, he already played. Man, you guys are very particular. I am going to take <laughs> Matthew Stafford then. Oh, that means I'm going booty scooting. I am uh, braving the injury yeah. to Cam Newton. But, Why not? But he's Cam Newton. And I'll close it out with Russell Wilson. That's my almost upset of the week. Seattle beating Detroit in Detroit. They are three-point dogs. So uh, I guess uh, I guess we're done. I have Ro- Big Big Ben, Kirk Cousins, Mitch Trubisky, Andy Dalton, and Russell Wilson to win the to win the whole thing. Not bad. I've got Patrick Mahomes who it's could like win having, by himself. Yeah, he's like two guys: Drew Brees, Andrew Luck, Carson Wentz, and Matthew Stafford. And the current projected winner, <clears throat> according to Draft, this team: Rodgers, Goff, Winston, Brady. Booty scooting. Yeah, you're, Newton. you're. I believe you're it. actually great with the uh, projected winner thing. You just haven't really executed on the actual winner thing. I find that insulting. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> he is directly insulting you. Yes, yes. yes. Um, well, you, I mean, I sir, can, I find your insults. Well, we project, to be insulting. It's very. It makes sense here because you've been around Jason, and we were projecting his league of record team. Yeah, to do I something know. that it and didn't it, do. And it did not. It did not fare <laughs> the same. Uh, Who else same can way? I insult, Brooks? Um, you got a bad face, Brooks. Take that. How's Billions treating you? How Are you done filming this season there, Judge? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. I and think. Baby Josh? Baby Josh was born yesterday. Yes. <laughs> and, Brooks, uh, give him his we, bottle. Here's how we're closing the show. Uh, we played Red Dead Redemption last night. Mm-hmm. There's a couple moments that we were joking reminded us of, uh, you know, living that uh, 
Oregon Trail life. And then baby Josh was like, I played Oregon Trail growing up. And then we realized he he played like we version, said, no, you didn't. Version eleven, because we were we were talking like OG oh, back in my day. Black screen dysentery. It was, it was green. Everything was green. You're on darn the right, it was. That's how we liked and it. And we liked it. We loved it. We did, but then it got better, and now I like the new version. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I was. Good going. luck this week in your games. Don't forget to vote for us at Foot Clan. Vote. Have a wonderful. We hope you weekend. are the banker version of Oregon Trail this week. Yes. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.